the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, I know y'all are ready for a sermon on that joyful first lesson, <laughs> which is very well read, but it's still pretty depressing. But I'm, I'm really not going to preach on that. Um, it was built in 1967. It was a uh, steel truss bridge that was over the Mississippi River, right at the uh, St. Anthony Falls in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, it was the third largest, or excuse me, the third busiest bridge in Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes, lots of bridges there. Up to 140,000 vehicles crossed it every day. And for 40 years, it seemed that it was able to bear the weight of what the people of Minnesota needed it to bear. But on August 1st, 2007, it failed. And it crashed during rush hour into the Mississippi River below. Over 130 people were injured, and miraculously, only 13 were killed. The National Transportation Safety Board, the NTSB, <coughs> investigated, and they found there was a design flaw. Now I want you to think about this. For 40 years, this bridge stood, and people thought it would hold up. It would be the support they needed. But the whole time, it was inadequate, and it eventually failed. And so the question is, brothers and sisters, to you and to me, is what is the main support in our lives? Not what are all the things that support us, for hopefully we have many, but what is the thing at the center of our lives that we can depend on? Now I ask this question because of today's gospel. Today's gospel is mostly a parable told by Jesus, and it's an interesting gospel because it is deceptively simple. It seems like a rehash of that old scriptural thing, a good thing, but done a lot, the love of money is the root of all evil. But it is much more than that. So what I want to do is look at this parable and to see what Jesus says, but also importantly, what he doesn't say about the main character in this story. So this story is about a landholder, a landowner. And the first thing we know is that he has fields and they produce abundantly. Now, it's interesting. Jesus, of course, knew his Hebrew Bible. And he knew that in the Old Testament, particularly in the Psalms, abundance is a sign of blessing. So what do we know of this man? He was blessed. We also know that he was hardworking. Have you ever tried to grow crops or even a garden? I know Brenda and I have, and the result was not pretty. <laughs> Last year, we got just hundreds of blossoms for cucumbers. Not one cucumber, but lots of blossoms. And so, so farming is hard work, so we know that for his fields to produce abundantly, he was blessed, and he was also a hard worker. And, and scripture commends to us working, and it also commends to us using our talents. So far, this guy's looking pretty good, actually. We also know he was a good steward. He wanted nothing wasted. Now, of course, he wanted not only to gather it, but he wanted to sell it. But, you know, in our culture especially, nothing wrong with that. So he was a good steward. And he also made provision for the future. If you ever like I do watch some of the uh, financial channels, every other commercial is about making provision for the future. I have never seen in, the, in, in any other commercials, by the way, so many white people dressed in white clothes on sailboats. I don't know what it is with financial <laughs> planning commercials. But he provided for the future. So what exactly is wrong with this guy? Why is this called the parable of the rich fool? And it is for one reason and one reason only. It is that he thought his wealth 
which could provide and can provide many things in this world, could be his main support in his life. He trusted, in other words, in finite things to give him infinite support. I want to give you an image. And our image is a life, our lives, as a big wheel. And the wheel, of course, has a hub. And the hub is the most important thing. It's right at the center. And it has many spokes that come off of it. And the spokes are important because they keep that wheel strong. The hub's the most important, but the spokes are also important. And I think of our lives, the many supports we have, the good things in our lives as the spokes. You know, think of some of those, right? We have our job, our career, vocation, however you look at it. It gives us something to do. It gives our lives meaning. And it gives us the financial support we need to keep body and soul together and to give ourselves and our families the things we want and need. Very important. If you're retired, you have at least Social Security, maybe your 401k, investments, whatever. Good support. Nothing wrong with that. We have our families, you know, our families are so important to us. I know my family is to me a great support and a great source of love and caring. We have our friends who are extremely important, a great sense of support. We have our church, another big spoke in the wheel of our life, and I'll say more about our church later. You know, here we find affiliation, we find uh, where we encounter Jesus. I know I encounter Jesus most profoundly here. Our church is important to us. We might have hobbies or art that we practice that gives our, fills out our life, gives it meaning. Maybe we play sports or we follow sports, and that helps us, you know, and just enjoy life. All of these things are good. There's nothing wrong with these things. They're all good. But here's the thing, brothers and sisters. They're all finite. Every one of them will eventually go, as the saying says, the way of all flesh. Everything we value will eventually fade away and pass away. And it's not joyful to talk about. I mean, it's like Woody Allen says about death. He said, I'm not afraid of dying. I just don't want to be there when it happens. <laughs> you know, we don't want to talk about this. When Brenda and I, you know, when we talk about dying, I remember several years ago, I called Dibs. I said, I don't want to be there when you die. I called Dibs. And she said, you can't call dibs on dying. And I said, I just did. <laughs> now, I don't want it to happen anytime soon, but the truth is, we know our loved ones will die, our jobs. You know, life can change in the blink of an eye. You know, I, I've known people who had this great job. They planned to be there the rest of their lives, retire. And they were called into the boss's office and told, you know, one of those phrases, a reduction in force or a downsizing. And now they're looking for work. And they're so worried, they don't know what they're going to do. And try being like 55 or older and finding a job. They aren't breaking down the door to hire me. I know I've been in my office in churches I've served in where someone came in tears telling me, they thought they had a solid marriage, and their spouse came to them and said they were leaving. And I've seen children who just disowned their parents, and parents that disowned their children. You've seen it too, haven't you? And it's just heartbreak. You know, there's so many things. What about people who have been in just fine health, great health their whole lives, and they go to the doctor and get a terrible diagnosis, or they have some crisis in their health that rocks their world. I mean, it changes everything. It turns everything upside down. Maybe it's something like surgery that keeps you from, you know, getting around like you used to. It gives you months of therapy so you can't do the things you used to do. But in all these cases, brothers and sisters, we see 
that's a spokes of our lives is important as our fact, when one bends or breaks, we often depend on the others even more. But it's at these times where we need to look at what's at the hub of our lives. And the only thing, the only one that is worthy of being the hub of our lives is God and Jesus Christ. You know, this is a story of the cross. The story of the cross is that Jesus took everything that sin and death could throw at him. And it seemed to have killed them, but on the third day he rose again, and, and we found out that he was stronger, that they would not, those forces would not destroy him. And so it is when we trust in him that we will die, that all will pass away. And yet when we trust in God, it will not be the end of us. You know, a lot of you probably know, I'm three and a half weeks ago, I was trying to decide whether to talk about this, but why not? Three and a half weeks ago, I was sitting here in a, in a uh, staff meeting, and I had a seizure. Never had a seizure in my life. I didn't enjoy it. Neither did anyone else around me. I woke up in an ambulance, and, and it, was, it was horrible. Now, I've had all these tests. They think it was related to my fast and massive weight loss. And they can't find anything wrong, surprisingly, even with my head. They did all kinds of things with my head, and they can't find anything wrong. Friends and family are shocked. I wore a heart monitor for three weeks. I hated that thing. Everything normal, blood chemistry normal. And the only thing is I can't drive for six months. Now, that really does stink. But i got to tell you, when these things happen, it rocks your world. Because it challenges your assumption of who you are. I am not self-sufficient like I thought I was. And so I depend on people in this church who have been so kind to offer me rides, family. But God and I have also had some really good conversations. And I recognize, I recognize, that it must be Him, God, who is in the center of my life. Because I don't only trust in Him to sustain me, but all those others I love. So why was the rich fool a fool? By worldly standards, he was smart. He was a great businessman. But he was a fool because he thought his wealth could save him. Brothers and sisters, that first lesson was really impressive, and the psalm wasn't a whole lot better. <laughs> but it does contain truth that everything is passing away. But when we are one with God in Jesus Christ, we are more than victors over sin and death. My prayer for each of us is that we not morbidly go through life thinking of these things, but we are nevertheless deeply aware of the shortness and uncertainty of life so that we can hold on to what is eternal. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In response to that good